My name is Miki Moik, or Michaela Moik, and I'm from Austria, presenting the Austrian Thalidomide and Contagun group. I'm the one who's traveling to all the conferences, so I'm the fun one. We are actually three ladies. One is the historian, so she's great, Shoshana, she does a lot of research. And she also found one of the papers that proves that uh, thalidomide, that was called softenone in Austria, was around in March, April 56, so before it was officially released. So um, what is our story? Um, my I, I didn't know that I was a thalidomide until I was 18, and there are not so many people around in Austria. There was hardly anything on the news. My parents were very young. So, you know, I got in contact because of some friend's daughter who is uh, dismally, oh, who's got dismally. And they saw photos of kids that looked like me in Heidelberg, and that's where I went, and so I applied. And then in 99, there was an article in one of our daily magazines called The Standard, where it says that there is a new re release of uh, two scientists who found out that it's, you know, my kids or the, my grandchildren could have it like inherit. what is it called in English, inherited. Uh, so I said, you know, I want to see this, I want to read this. And then the journalist said, ah, oh, he wants to have an interview. And I said, you know, I was interviewed when I was 25 years old, 25 years after thalidomide, and then the press said they won't print it because my life is too normal. So, but back then in 99, um, I, had the, I gave the interview and then the um, TV station rang and so we had an appointment, and this was my first um, time on TV in Austria, where I said, I want to know how many we are in Austria. So we were probably 15 at the first meeting, and nine were officially uh, recognized in Germany with the Stiftung, and the others didn't have any idea in what they should do. And back then, the law was different, the Stiftungsgesetz, so they, there was no time to apply. So after probably another few years, we sort of started going again, the group, because it fell asleep, because we, some of us had teenage kids' problems. So we restarted in probably 2007. And since then, we've got the self-help group, and it's always the same people working, like three of us, which is pretty hard, because we are all working full-time. In Austria, because we did a lot of media and um, interviews, we got the Minister of Health to give us 2.8 million for all of the thalidomiders in Austria. The problem is that uh, it takes now almost three years and they still have 21 where they don't know if they are thalidomiders or not. So they accepted by now 26 and I think rejected eight or nine. So and 21 are still waiting, but this commission is taking ages. And the next sitting of this commission or meeting of the commission will be now at the end of October. And they said by the end of the year 2012, it will all be finished and settled. The 2.8 millions are divided between all of us or will be divided. So everybody who's acknowledged until now got 50,000 euro. And the rest, the 1.8 millions, they have to, oh, it's not true, because it's a growing number. So whatever is left will be divided. Um, and the government said this is sort of a human gesture. So we have no legal possibilities to make this in a different thing or in a, another paying, whatever. So our plan for our group is to, after everything is settled, get together and go the way that we want to be accepted like vaccination victims or other, you know, people with uh, medical conditions um, where they get uh, compensation. Working as a self-help group in Austria, if you're a really tiny, small group, is pretty hard because our members or friends they, if they come, then they sort of sit and listen, and the main question is, when will we get our money? So none of them is really willing to do any work, put in any ideas or efforts, and they're only waiting, and so it's pretty hard. And that's why I think Edric is quite a good thing, because I was introduced to Edric last year by Ellen Summerside in Cambridge when I went to the conference, because it puts together 
other people like dismally people or people with uh, limb problems, def what is it called, defiances. Um, so this is a bigger group than a larger group, and I think that will be easier if we connect and you know find other people who, in, who are in similar situations to get together. If we all would have our medical reports, our private thing, you know, doctors would be able, or more able, to treat us in a better way. Because when I broke my shoulder last year, they didn't know what to do with me. They sent me home and didn't do anything. <laughs> they only made x-ray and it was broken twice and then they said, oh, is it dislocated as well? We don't know. They wanted to make a photo, an x-ray of the other shoulder. I said, you can't compare it. There is no shoulder joint in it, so it's only two bones. And because when they don't know what to do, they, you know, they give you a kick and then leave it. Yeah. So I think Ederick is a great idea and I like it.